and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. My name is Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. We thank you for all of you out there that are watching and logging on and joining us here tonight on the Mobile Sanctuary. So please take a moment, post a comment in the chat, all right? It's right down there. Post a comment in the chat. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know what is going on with your life. Let us know what your favorite color is. Whatever it is, please take a moment and drop a comment in the chat, all right? Now, also, don't forget to hit that share or invite button, and please help uh, bring some other people into the mobile sanctuary with you here tonight, all right? Now, lastly, let us know how we can also best continue to pray for all of you that are out there, okay? Now, drop your prayer request in the comment section, okay? Drop your prayer request in the comment section. We would love to be able to add you to our prayer list and to be able to pray for you and pray over any sort of needs and requests that you may have here tonight. Again, are you ready to worship are you ready to join in? Are you ready to dig into the word of God here tonight? Man, I hope you are. I'm excited. I'm ready for this word. And I hope that tonight it will be especially good for all of you that are watching out there. I hope this is a word that will be important to you. But most importantly, let's just get ready to be excited for what God can do here in the mobile sanctuary tonight. Okay, we are continuing within our series called When God Calls Your Name. When God Calls Your Name. And so this month we're diving into stories where God calls individuals by name. And I just think that this is just the coolest thing ever. All right. So we are studying different people who have had their name called out by God. So the first week we looked at the story of Moses. Last week, we looked at the story of Samuel. This week, we're switching gears a little bit, and we are turning to the New Testament, and we are going to be looking at the fascinating story of Zacchaeus, all right? So let's get ready, and let's get pumped to be able to dig into the Word of God and read this story for ourselves. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said. Quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Whoa, what an exciting word! I mean, that is just totally one of the greatest things that I've ever heard. Jesus calling out someone by name. So as I think about this here tonight, man, I just simply want to kick things off with this question. What would you do if Jesus called out your name today? All right. What would you do if Jesus called out your name today. Share your thoughts in the comments. Let's know what you think, and let's put this in the chat, all right? All right.
right, so we are going to kick off by learning about the first point tonight, which is talking about the history of Jericho, all right? The history of Jericho. And I'm not talking about the wrestler, all right? I'm talking about the actual city of Jericho. Now, Jericho is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world, and it's located in the Jordan Valley, which is north of the Dead Sea. So in the time of Jesus, Jericho was a flourishing city known for its palm trees, balsam groves, and it was a significant economic hub due to its strategic location and all the various trade routes. So the question is this, why was Jesus in Jericho? Hmm. Well, Jesus was on his final journey to Jerusalem, where he was ultimately going to be facing crucifixion. And Jericho was a very key and pivotal stop on the way to Jerusalem. Um, in fact, the path from Jericho to Jerusalem was so well-traveled, it made Jericho basically the prime place for all travelers just to be passing through on their way to Jerusalem. And also, I think it just would have been a strategic move on Jesus's part to be able to go to this place and to be able to minister to as many people coming and going as possible, right? Amen. And so Jesus's mission, it just doesn't stop just because he goes into a different town. Um, what we see with Jesus is oftentimes the ministry, it just keeps going and going and going. And that is the case here. And so within his mission, Jesus was able to reach out to those that are marginalized and rejected by society. And so we see in this story, tax collectors like uh, Zacchaeus, they were often despised by their fellow Jews for collaborating with the Roman authorities and for uh, their complete perceived perception of greed and corruption. You know, they were always up in your business and they were always checking on your dollars and they were always taking your coins, yo. <laughs> All right, so tax collectors, they're bad, okay? They're just bad. That's just my say. Tax collectors, they're bad, all right? So by choosing to visit Jericho and engaging with someone like Zacchaeus, Jesus demonstrated um, his commitment to seeking out and saving the lost. And that's important for us to learn here tonight. I want you to know that Jesus is committed, all right? He is committed to seeking and saving the lost. That's some amen praise right there, okay? So by choosing to visit Jericho and engaging with someone like Zacchaeus, I want you to know that Jesus is fully demonstrating his commitment to seek and to save the lost. Amen. Amen. Praise God right where you're at. Type that in the chat. Say, I'm praising him for that. Because trust me, if it wasn't for that, me and you would not be having a conversation here tonight. It's because of Jesus and it's because of him bringing us here together. Even if it's online, we are having this conversation. So I praise God for his commitment to seek and save the lost. Amen. And so Jesus's actions in Jericho showed his inclusive nature, really, of his ministry and his desire to be able to transform lives, no matter what the boundaries were that had to be broken, regardless of any of the societal and economic status that was going on within the people of the time. Jesus Christ was there to seek and save the lost. Church, are you excited that Jesus is seeking and saving the lost here tonight? Amen? Amen. Now, here's a fun fact to note for this. You know, prior to his encounter with Zacchaeus, um, you know, Jesus was uh, seen performing many, 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 many miracles in his life, especially those within the city of Jericho, um, including healing a blind beggar whose name was, uh, you know, Bartimaeus, you know, old blind Bartimaeus, if you remember that story. And so this is the reason why the people were so hyped up to see Jesus, you just didn't know what was going to be happening. You just didn't know what was going to be going on. And you just didn't want to be able to miss the action that was going to be going on as Jesus was coming into town. And this is why Jesus, I believe, he drew so many large crowds that increased his public awareness and his curiosity about himself. And it was here in Jericho uh, where some of those things happened. And so you can understand why Zacchaeus, as we read about in the scripture, he was so determined to see Jesus within this light. He was hoping to be able to experience a miracle with his very own eyes. All right, church, I've got a good question for you here tonight. What miracles have you seen in your own life because of what Jesus has done? Type in the chat. 
What miracles have you seen in your own life because of what Jesus has done? Type in the chat. We are on our second point for here tonight, and we are going to be talking about who was Zacchaeus, all right? Who was Zacchaeus? Say that to yourself. Say, who was Zacchaeus? Well, there's always a fun song to sing, but I'm going to spare you that because I'm sure that if you heard me sing it, you may not think it was very much fun, if that makes any sense. Well, anyway, let's talk about Zacchaeus here tonight, okay? Zacchaeus, he is a pretty fascinating character here in the New Testament, And we see a story unfold here in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Um, And this story, why I love this story so much is because it's packed with so many themes of redemption, repentance, and transformation. And so the first thing I want to talk about with Zacchaeus is this. Of course, he was known as being the chief tax collector in Jericho, okay? He was the head honcho of the IRS there in Jericho. And what this meant for maybe in us understanding that position is that his position was a position of power and influence. But because of that power and influence, it also made him a very unpopular figure with all of the common public people. Uh, Much like how the IRS today is not the most popular thing. I mean, they could get an Instagram or a TikTok and most people would probably not want to care about what is going on in that world. So it's kind of the same thing. Uh, Zacchaeus had a lot of problems with good public opinion of himself. But, you know, as mentioned previously too, you know, tax collectors were just generally disliked by their fellow Jews because they worked really for and with the Roman authorities on uh, collecting tax money. And oftentimes the, the means and methods of collecting the tax dollars was sometimes very cruel very unfair and very unjust. Oftentimes, a lot of the tax collectors also extorted money. So they would pay all their Caesar, uh, their money to Caesar and keep about 15, 20, 25, 30, 35% more for themselves. Um, However, that worked out within their favor. And so here we we see uh, Zacchaeus being a part of that and being um, the guy who was in charge of all that here in Jericho. Being the chief tax collector, Zacchaeus was especially wealthy as well, but he was also particularly despised. Um, He was very much uh, described here within the scriptures as being very rich, which of course makes sense because of his given job. Um, Probably in some of his past dealings, although it's not specifically said, um, maybe just kind of assumed um, because of how tax collectors were, he gained a lot of his wealth, not only from his job, but also maybe uh, from some of those underhanded dealings that was going on. All right. But his wealth, however, did, you know, come at the cost of him being seen as a traitor and, and a cheat, really, by his community. And so despite all the material success that Zacchaeus had accumulated for himself, he was clearly missing out on something that was way more important to his life than the money he had in the bank. And so, uh, you know, another interesting thing about Zacchaeus here for a minute is that despite all of those things, you know, he had a very interesting detail about his physical stature, which many people know because of the one famous song that's sung that I'm not going to sing to you, 
but I know it's in your head right now, okay? Zacchaeus was a short guy, all right? You thought I was going to say a wee little man, but I didn't. I said he was a short guy. Zacchaeus was short. Um, and that's not to his discredit. That is what is written in the scripture. So we know that's true, all right? Because we believe that the word of God is true. And I believe that this is a true and accurate description of this character. So why would the Bible care about someone's stature, right? Why would you care if they're short or tall, you know, uh, any of those sort of details? Well, it goes along with the story, really. And the, the detail of this might seem trivial because uh, it just maybe is, but it does play a huge role in understanding Zacchaeus' story. You see, when Jesus was passing through Jericho, Zacchaeus, he, he wanted to see him, but he couldn't see over the crowd. Why? Well, because he was a wee little man. He was short, all right? He was a little shorty, and he was trying to be able to see past people that were, well, more tally or taller. I was trying to make that work. Forget all of what I just said with that. When Jesus was passing through Jericho, Zacchaeus wanted to see him, but he couldn't see him over the crowd at all. And so he did something quite unexpected. He climbed a sycamore tree. He climbed, in fact, a sycamore fig tree. And this act, especially for someone his stature, showed great determination and curiosity about Jesus. I mean, how many times do you see someone trying to climb a tree just to see you as you're passing through town, huh? I know for some of you, you're probably thinking, well, that would be a little bit creepy, Pastor. Well, I get it, but think about it. How many times do you see someone trying to climb a tree just to get a good glimpse of you, all right? Take that in consideration for, you know, Zacchaeus here. And so when Jesus reached the spot where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and he called out to him. And he called out to him by name saying, Zacchaeus! All right. And then he told him to come on down because he had planned to stay at his house. And this was a big deal. You know why this was a big deal? This was a big deal because here was Jesus addressing Zacchaeus by his name. Amen. Here was Jesus addressing Zacchaeus by his name. He was addressing him directly and he was choosing to stay at his home. And, and this was, church, let me just say, this was really weird. This is a strange experience, okay? They were probably thinking that Jesus would go to dinner with one of the politicians or someone of uh, even more influence, not the cruddy little tax collector guy who's cheating and, and wheeling and scheming and weaseling his way through things in life, all right? This wasn't probably who uh, people in the, the city thought that Jesus was going to be hanging out with. But here he was, he was saying, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. I'm going to hang out with you. And so Zacchaeus, just think about Zacchaeus. Here he was, a man who all his life thought that he had built himself up because of his wealth and because of his, uh, you know, I guess maybe some fame, even though it's more maybe, maybe infamous uh, of his character. And that left him empty. Think about that for a moment. It left him completely empty. And so we see Zacchaeus here in this story now responding to Jesus. And he responds with joy and he responds with excitement and he welcomes Jesus into his home. And I believe that this helps show Zacchaeus in a different light. It helps show his openness and willingness to change his recognition of who Jesus really was. And the real transformation happened when Zacchaeus then made a public declaration from everybody. So you know this was hitting the Jericho Twitter feed at that time, okay? You know this was going on the news. You knew this was going and spreading widespread, all right? Because here was this guy who was a cheat, a known cheat, and this is what Zacchaeus promised. He promised to give half of his wealth to the poor and repay anyone he had cheated four times over, all right? Say that again. He was there to re, uh, pay the poor and repay anyone who had cheated him four times over. All right. And this was a big deal because this was way beyond what the Jewish law required for restitution. And it's a clear sign to me, and hopefully it's a clear sign to you, that Zacchaeus was genuinely repentant and he had experienced a profound change of heart. Amen. So Jesus responded by affirming that salvation had come to Zacchaeus' house. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God that Jesus can save the lost. 
So he called Zacchaeus a true son of Abraham, which reinstated him within the community of God's people. Wow. And then Jesus also made a powerful statement about his mission. He says, for the son of man came to seek and save those that were lost. And I really believe that this sums up why Jesus was there and why it it really, to me, helps bring across the significance of his encounter with Zacchaeus. Because I believe Zacchaeus' story here tonight, although, you know, it, it's not it's not a very long story. It's a very powerful story because to me, church, it's an example of how when we encounter Jesus, how our lives can be transformed for the better right there on the spot. Amen. We don't have to wait. We don't have to, you know, set up an appointment. We don't have to put it on our calendar. Jesus is here. He's ready to work. He's wanting to work here with you. He's wanting to work here with you tonight. Are you going to let him, church? Are you going to let him? work where you're at? Are you going to let him work while you're holding your phone watching the mobile sanctuary? Are you going to let Jesus work if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're at? Are you going to let Jesus work in your life, church? That is the most important question that you could ask yourself right here, right now. Despite all of his wealth, despite the status that he had created for himself, Zacchaeus recognized his need for redemption. Amen. And Jesus's willingness to engage with him despite his Uh, societal reputation and his subsequent acts of repentance and generosity illustrate to us how God can work and move and transforms our lives and and how Jesus's message was so clear. Because even on the way to save us on Calvary, he still took time to save Zacchaeus. And man, when I think about it that way, it just hits me in a different way. You know, it's a reminder here for us tonight that Nobody, okay? Nobody, nobody. Say that with me. Say nobody, nobody, nobody is beyond the reach of God's grace. And nobody is beyond the reach of his love. And true change is reflected both, not just with our words, not just because we decide to pick up a Bible. True change doesn't happen just because we decide to go to a couple of church services. True change happens when God begins to change our hearts, our minds, our lives, our actions, our will, our desire. God is powerful enough to do that, but we have to accept his invitation, much like Zacchaeus did. All right, so how does God's invitation of salvation extend to us today? How does God's invitation of salvation extend to us today? Type this in the chat. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you're thinking, all right? I've been doing a whole lot of talking, and now I want to do a whole lot of listening. Let's see what you've got in the chat. Please type something in the chat. What does God's invitation of salvation look like, and how does that extend to us today? Type this in the chat. our third main point, and I want to talk to you here tonight about the invitation. When Jesus was passing through Jericho, he stopped right under the tree where Zacchaeus had climbed up to see him. And so you can imagine the scene. Jesus looks up. He's looking up. And he calls Zacchaeus by name saying, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. There's part of that song. Anyway, he, he just simply, if we were going to maybe paraphrase it for today's words, he's going to say, Zacchaeus, you need to come on down here. I'm going to be a guest in your home today. All right. 
And it wasn't just a simple casual request. This was a personal and urgent request from Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus just didn't want to just simply pass on by. He wanted to be able to spend time with Zacchaeus. He wanted to be able to share a meal with Zacchaeus. He wanted to be able to connect with Zacchaeus on a deeper level. Church, are you seeing where we're going with this here tonight? You see, the invitation is important. The invitation that is given to us by Jesus is important. And this is an invitation that is extraordinary for just a few different reasons. So as mentioned, Zacchaeus, of course, was a tax collector. It was a dirty profession. We've talked all about that. And it was all associated, of course, with greed and betrayal. But by inviting himself to Zacchaeus's house, okay, Jesus was breaking all the social norms and showing everybody that he had love and grace for everybody. It didn't matter their background. It didn't matter if they were really poor. It didn't matter if they were really rich. It didn't matter if they were in the middle. It didn't matter where they were at. It didn't matter when they were born in this house or that house. It just didn't matter. Jesus was trying to show his love and acceptance for everybody. And this is why I think Zacchaeus' reaction was just so immediate and joyful. I mean, he quickly came down off of that tree. He welcomed Jesus into his house. Amen. How many of you are coming down from your trees here, church? How many of you are coming down to welcome Jesus where he's at? Amen. And and the awesome thing for us here today is that this is the kind of invitation from Jesus that's open to all of us. Amen. I'm so glad for that. So Jesus, he invites all of us into fellowship with him no matter where we are at. And it doesn't matter what we've done. It a call into a personal relationship that transforms every single part of our lives. You know, and when I think about this, I think about scriptures like Revelation 3.20, where Jesus says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Church, I love that verse. And I want you to know that I think that this verse also echoes what happened with Zacchaeus. Jesus stands ready at the door of all of our hearts. He's ready to come in. He's knocking. He's letting you know that there's an invitation. He would love to be able to come and fulfill within your life. He would love to be able to share life. He would be loving to have a meal with you inside of your life if you're letting him. And I can't think of anything better than to be able to invite Jesus Christ into our lives in a personal and intimate relationship where we can experience God's love, God's grace, God's peace, God's mercy. Do you see all the benefits of what God brings to the table, church? He doesn't bring depression. He doesn't bring despair. He doesn't bring more sadness. He doesn't bring more evil. He doesn't bring more selfishness. He brings more of himself into your life and he's ready to fill your life, church, with all of those qualities. Praise God he can do that. Praise the Lord that he's able to do that here with us here tonight. You know, another verse that beautifully captures, I believe, the essence of this story also is John 15, 15. And I want to just share with you here tonight, this is what Jesus says. He says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. So Jesus just isn't inviting us to follow him in a distant and formal way. He's inviting his church into a close friendship, and he wants to share his heart with us and involve us in his mission. And so much like Zacchaeus, we are invited to come down from our tree, whatever that tree may be. And we're here to welcome Jesus into our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in awe and reverence, acknowledging your greatness and majesty. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, full of grace and mercy. We adore you, God, for your loving kindness that knows no bounds, just as Jesus stopped and called Zacchaeus by name. Lord, you know each of us intimately and invite us into a personal relationship with you. We praise you, O God, for your unending love and the way that you seek and save the lost. Lord, we confess that like Zacchaeus, we often fall short of your glory. 
we get caught up in our own ways. And sometimes we climb our own trees of pride and selfishness and sin. Father, Lord, forgive us for the times we have turned away from you and your call and chosen our own paths. Cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness and help us to come down from our own trees, ready to welcome you into our hearts and our homes. We repent of our sins and ask you for forgiveness and healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his willingness to reach out to us regardless of our past and for his transforming power in our lives. We are grateful for the story of Zacchaeus, which reminds us of your boundless grace and the joy that can come from being in your presence. Lord, we thank you for knocking on the doors of our hearts and for calling us friends. God, we thank you for your promise to dine with us and share in our lives. Father, we lift up to you all of those here tonight that just simply need a touch from you. Whether that's a physical touch, a mental or emotional touch, Lord, we pray for your healing touch upon every single person that needs you. We pray that you strengthen their bodies, Lord, strengthen their minds and spirits and provide them, Lord, with, with the care and support that they need. Lord, for those that are just facing so many uh, just you know, health challenges, Lord, we pray for your peace and comfort and your healing to be placed upon them. Surround them, Lord, with your love and the right resources to help them, Lord, through any of their struggles. Lord, we also pray for the emotional well-being of those that are listening and watching tonight. Comfort those who are burdened with anxiety, depression, and, and grief. Let your presence be their source of hope and strength. And remind them, Lord, that they're not alone and that you're with them in every step of the way. Lord, we pray. We pray for those that are lost and do not know you yet as Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And Lord, just as you sought out Zacchaeus, we ask that you seek out those who are far from you here tonight that's, Lord, within our midst. Open up their hearts and their minds to you. Help your love and truth, Lord, just be poured into their lives. May they hear your voice calling them out by their name and respond accordingly to you. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and feet, sharing the good news and just, Lord, showing, Lord, your love to those around us. And we pray for these things, all of these things, Lord. We trust in your perfect will and timing. We know that you're a good and faithful God and that, Lord, we can rest in your promises. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here on the Mobile Sanctuary tonight. Now, don't forget, you hit that like and subscribe button if you are watching on YouTube and if you enjoy this kind of content. It's been a blessing to be able to be with you and to learn about this topic. I appreciate all of your prayers for the Mobile Sanctuary and I appreciate everything that all of you guys do. This is Pastor Phil and I will just simply say, I will see you next time here on the Mobile Sanctuary.